Yes, good evening. So in this lecture, I want to finish off with this chapter number eight. I will quickly uh, uh, tell you all what are the equations that you should be remembering in this chapter uh, from the board exam point of view and from the entrance exam point of view. Okay. And also in brief, I will just uh, introduce what are the different types of electromagnetic waves that is the electromagnetic spectrum I will be talking about in this lecture. Okay, since it is a completely theoretical part, electromagnetic spectrum, you are required to read that. Okay, and, and I'm not going to explain each and every point from that theory. Okay, so it is there in the uh, notes as well as in the textbook, electromagnetic spectrum. You can read that. But the equations that are related to this chapter, let me just quickly mention those to you. Okay. So the first one is the equations of an electromagnetic wave, okay? So if you have got an electromagnetic wave, then it will be traveling in one particular direction, okay? So in this case, in order to write the equation of an electromagnetic wave, what I will be considering is that the propagation, direction of propagation of the wave let me take that to be along the z direction. Okay. This is the direction of propagation of the wave. Okay. And since we know that from our previous class, what is an electromagnetic wave? Electromagnetic wave consists of electric and magnetic fields oscillating perpendicular to each other and they are in turn perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. Okay, so if direction of propagation of the wave is along z direction, then we should be considering one direction for the electric field and the other direction for the magnetic field. And thus they all will be mutually perpendicular to each other. So what I would do is, I will consider the x axis. So we can change the axis system. Okay, we can rotate an axis system. I hope you are familiar with that. Not always this will be along x direction, this will be along y direction, and this one will be along z direction. We can change it. Okay. That is as per our requirement. We can alter the direction of the axis. So this is this I have taken as the z axis. This is a x axis and this is my y axis. So I consider the electric field to be along the x direction. 
electric field direction okay and this is my magnetic field direction clear so thus all three will make our electromagnetic wave that we are going to draw now so let me draw the electromagnetic wave so this is the x direction of the electromagnetic wave these are the vectors related to the electric field these are called as electric field vectors and you are not required to know much about this okay so this is my electric field i will similarly draw the magnetic field this is my magnetic field okay similarly these are the magnetic field vectors so if in an exam you are asked to draw the diagram of an electromagnetic wave then you are supposed to draw it like this okay to ensure that this seems to be perpendicular to this one clear so now let i am not going to derive any equation okay this equations that i am going to write these are simple wave equations which you should be remembering no derivation is there so let e be directed along x axis electric field be directed along x axis magnetic field be directed along y axis and direction of propagation of propagation of the electromagnetic wave i am using the short form electromagnetic wave b along the z axis clear so therefore i can write the equation therefore we can write the electromagnetic wave equation as e x is equals to e0 sin of kz minus omega t this is the electric field equation for the electromagnetic wave okay this is the equation for the electric field of this electromagnetic wave similarly we can write the magnetic field equation of the electromagnetic wave to be by is equals to b0 sin of kz minus omega clear so these are the two equations that you are required to remember if at all they are asked in the exam ex is equals to e0 sin of kz minus omega t and by is equals to b0 sin of kz minus omega t the z indicates that the direction of propagation is along the z direction okay and what is this k where k is equals to 2 pi by lambda okay k is equals to 2 pi by lambda and k is called the wave vector or the propagation vector it is called the propagation vector and this lambda is called as your sorry k is equals to 2 pi by lambda let's do it well lambda is the wavelength of the wave and omega 
is the this omega is the angular frequency yeah. omega is the angular frequency clear so this is called as the wave vector or the propagation vector that means it will it gives us the direction of the wave in which direction the wave is going to travel and we can also find the speed of the wave speed of the wave using the same equations speed of the electromagnetic wave you are simply required to remember this if at all it is thus then you should be producing it in the exam so it is c is equals to omega upon k angular frequency divided by the wave vector gives us the speed of the electromagnetic wave the c indicates the speed of the electromagnetic wave and why i have used this as c because the, for every electromagnetic wave any type of electromagnetic wave that you are going to take the speed of the wave will be remaining same okay the speed of the wave is a constant quantity and it will always be equal to 3 into 10 is to 8 meters per second okay it is always c is equals to 3 into 10 is to 8 meters per second in any space and time the velocity or the speed of the electromagnetic wave is not going to change it is always c is equals to omega upon k and it's a constant quantity okay any electromagnetic wave you take you take the take its angular frequency and its wave vector a magnitude of wave vector it will always give you 3 into 10 to 8 meters per second okay so this is the relation for the speed of the wave where the c is also written as 1 by under root of mu not epsilon not okay this all you should be remembering in free space c can also be written as 1 by under root of mu not epsilon not you can write the speed of the wave even in terms of the frequency of the wave and how are you going to do that in terms of the frequency of the wave so please note down this this is not there this part at least whatever i have just given is not there in the notes that has been provided to you okay so if i just write omega is equals to c k okay if i just write this rewrite this equation as omega is equals to c k then we know that this omega is equals to what it is 2 pi nu when nu is the frequency of the wave nu is called the frequency of the wave will be equals to c times k where k is 2 pi by lambda 2 pi by lambda so this 2 pi and 2 pi gets cancelled and you get another equation relating the frequency of the wave wavelength of the wave and the speed of the wave that is nu lambda is equals to c where nu is the frequency of the electromagnetic wave okay so this is all about the electromagnetic wave these are the two equations of the electric and magnetic fields of an electromagnetic wave which you should remember and from this what is the k what is this omega k is equals to 2 pi by lambda and it is called the wave vector or propagation vector and this omega is called as the angular frequency and what is the equation for it it is 2 pi nu okay 2 pi nu when nu is the frequency and the speed of the wave can be written in terms of angular frequency and wave vector as omega by k and also it can be written in terms of permeability of free space and permittivity of free space as c is equals to 1 by under root of mu 0 epsilon 0 okay
okay and in terms of frequency if you write the speed of the electromagnetic wave it will be nu times lambda okay clear so this is what you are required to know and also if i just talk about the amplitudes of this two fields amplitudes of the electric field and that of the magnetic field what is the relationship between them okay so let me just write it over here relation relationship between amplitudes of electric and magnetic field and magnetic field of the electromagnetic wave is it is b0 is equals to e0 by c b0 is equals to e0 by c where c again is the speed of the wave okay clear so this is all the equations that you are required to know from this chapter related to the electromagnetic field okay so apart from this if you have understood this there is no derivation as such you are required to derive over here no derivations will be asked and if at all any questions can be asked from this then it will be mcq based questions okay it will be only mcq based questions wherein they can ask you relationships with when frequency and speed of the electromagnetic wave relationship between wave vector and uh, velocity of the electromagnetic wave or they can ask you the uh, equation of the electric and magnetic fields of the electromagnetic wave and also a relationship between the magnitudes of electric and magnetic fields of the electromagnetic wave which is this one clear so this is all the equations that you are required to know apart from this there is something and extra that you should remember and you should know about the electromagnetic wave let me quickly tell you about that again no derivation only the equation you will be required to know that is momentum and pressure momentum and pressure associated with an electromagnetic wave momentum and pressure associated with an electromagnetic wave so we know one thing that if you take any electric field if you take any charge plus q charge then it will alter the space around it and we have seen this in our first chapter okay it is going to alter the space around it and if you bring a negative charge in this space then what is going to happen is that sorry if you bring a negative charge in this space then what will happen it will experience some force this negative charge will experience some force due to this positive charge so why does this happen this happens because there is some energy that is carried by this field that is this electric field created by this plus q charge has got some energy in it it has got some energy in it so like for example if you take any any object on the ground and you do not apply any force on it no energy is any work going to be done any work can you expect that can be done on the object without supplying any energy to it okay not possible right so any electric field if you take then 
in that the effect of that electric field is felt because that electric field contains some energy in it okay that electric field contains energy in it okay and thus we can feel the effect of this electric field if there was no energy in this electric field then we could not feel any effect by placing by bringing a negative charge in that field okay not possible so thus there is electric field that is contained sorry electric energy that is contained electric field contains yeah that's right electric field contains energy in it so every electric field or magnetic field contains energy in it and thus we can feel the effect of the electric and magnetic field and that electric and magnetic field we measure in terms of a quantity that is called as electric field energy density and magnetic field energy density that means if you take an electric field let us suppose this room has got some electric field in it then per unit volume how much energy is contained in this electric field that means if you take a small unit volume of the in this electric field how much energy is contained into that electric field or if at all you take uh, some magnetic field in this room if there is some magnetic field existing in this room then how much energy is contained per unit volume in this magnetic field that is called as the energy density of that electric field or that magnetic field okay so what are the equations for that electric field energy density and magnetic field energy density so let me just give you those two equations electric field energy density that is energy per unit volume in an electric field is equals to epsilon 0 e by 2 okay it is is that correct epsilon 0 e squared by 2 where e is the magnitude of the electric field e is the magnitude of the electric field epsilon not is the permittivity of the free space so this is electric field energy density any electric field if you take for that case then how much en energy density it will have it will depend on the square of the intensity of the electric field similarly magnetic field energy density is equals to magnetic field energy density is equals to v squared by 2 mu naught okay it is v squared by 2 mu naught that means the energy per unit volume in a magnetic field is going to be directly proportional to the square of the magnitude of that magnetic field divided by 2 times you not okay so these are the two equations which you can memorize okay you can just memorize these equations two equations so why i gave you these two equations is that to tell you the fact that the every every electromagnetic wave for that case carries some energy with it so we know that we have just seen that an electromagnetic wave is what electromagnetic wave is made up of oscillating electric field and the magnetic field perpendicular to each other electric field and magnetic field perpendicular to each other so if the electromagnetic wave contains electric field and magnetic field in it then definitely it should have some energy density associated with it isn't it true so electric field will have some energy density and the magnetic field of the electromagnetic wave will also have some energy density thus we can say that an electromagnetic wave has got some non zero non zero 
energy density carried by it okay therefore we can say an electromagnetic wave carries some non zero energy with it okay and also and also it transfers linear momentum with it okay and how can you feel the effect of this why did i say this and electromagnetic waves carry some energy with it so any electromagnetic for that case may it be your radio waves may it be your infrared waves ultraviolet waves or your uh, normal visible light waves they carry some energy with them okay so thus we can feel the effect of it and also they transfer momentum along with that so for example if you just say if you just consider this one let us suppose some electromagnetic wave is traveling in this direction okay electromagnetic wave is traveling along this direction and you have got a surface as an obstruction which has got charges on it okay plus q charge let us suppose okay this surface has got charges on it and you are directing an electromagnetic wave onto that surface so what is going to happen is that due to the electric and magnetic fields that is present in this electromagnetic wave this charges will get disturbed and they will start moving okay this charges will get disturbed and they will start moving and thus this proves the fact that an electromagnetic waves carries some non zero energy with it and it transfers linear and it transfers linear momentum with it so if there was no energy in it this charges would not get disturbed and they would not and if they if electromagnetic wave could not transfer momentum then there would be no motion of this charges happening but this is seen okay if you take a charged surface and you direct an electromagnetic wave onto that there will be motion of the charges that will start to happen thus we can say momentum and pressure is associated with an electromagnetic wave so it is just like any other wave for example your sound wave or your waves in the water matter waves uh, in the the waves in the water that you can see in the uh, on the sea on the beach if you go you see that the pressure there is a lot of pressure and energy contained in the waves of the sea and thus we can say that the wave contains energy and pressure with it similarly the sound waves whatever i am speaking the information that is contained in the waves that i am generating the sound waves that i am generating that can be heard by you because it is in the form of the energy whatever i am speaking the information is present in the form of the energy in my speech and with the wave with the propagation of the wave this information gets transferred from my mouth to your ears okay to your ears that is due to this energy okay the information is contained in the form of the energy and momentum clear i hope this is this point is clear to everyone so thus how much we have spoken for just about just uh, just about the uh, energy and the momentum of an electromagnetic wave but we did not talk how much energy is contained in an electromagnetic wave so there is a quantity that is that we can uh, derive and write so if an electromagnetic wave so let me just write it if an electromagnetic wave if 
an electromagnetic wave transfers a total energy u transfers a total energy u okay transfers a total energy u to a surface in time t to a surface in time t then total linear momentum delivered to the surfaces then total linear momentum delivered to the surface is p is equals to u by c p is equals to u by c this is the amount of linear momentum that is transferred to any surface if the wave transfers an energy u in a time t okay in some unit time t if this electromagnetic wave transfers energy u then the momentum that is transferred to this surface due by this wave is p is equals to u by c so we can talk it in terms of our uh, real life examples like for example if you uh, just keep your hand in sunlight then you can feel the energy that is being transferred okay the palm of your hand gets heated up if you just keep it in a uh, hot sun okay it gets hot why it gets hot because some energy is being transferred to your hand by this ultraviolet rays which are the electromagnetic waves coming from the sun but you do not feel the pressure on your hand i told you that a momentum is transferred by the electromagnetic so if a momentum is transferred by the electromagnetic wave then your hand should be feeling some pressure right but you do not feel that pressure why is that so that is because it is the momentum p is equals to u by c where c is a very large quantity c is of the order of what is the order 10 raised to 8 3 into 10 raised to 8 something okay so thus u by c will become a very small quantity and thus you cannot feel the pressure okay you cannot feel the pressure due to the sunlight on your hand and there is some number given to you there is some number given in the textbook let me just so like for example the visible light the visible light that we see how much energy is contained in that it was found to be of the order of newton pressure okay radiation pressure so the visible light the visible light can transfer a momentum of a pressure of 7 into 10 raised to minus 6 newton per meter square okay. visible light it can transfer a pressure so if you keep your hand in visible light then this is the amount of pressure that will be delivered to the palm of your hand 7 into 10 raised to minus 6 newton per meters per a newton per meter square that's a negligible quantity does you do not feel your hand to be moving okay and okay yeah that's and that's called as radiation pressure how much pressure is exerted how much pressure is exerted on any surface due to the electromagnetic wave or due to any radiation which is an electromagnetic wave is called as the radiation pressure okay it's called as a radiation pressure so this is all i wanted to tell you about momentum and pressure associated with an electromagnetic wave so now let me 
any question any doubt anybody has any doubt so let me now come to the last part of this chapter that is electromagnetic spectrum that is basically what are the different types of elect electromagnetic waves that we have and how are this electromagnetic waves produced so we know about one type of electromagnetic wave that is produced and what is that electromagnetic wave it is our uv light the rays coming from the sun electromagnetic spectrum i am discussing so we are familiar with the uv light this is also a type of electromagnetic wave and how is this produced this is produced due to very high very uh, so very high temperature reactions that happens on the surface of the sun fusion reactions they are called as and due to those fusion reactions this type of rays are produced these are called as uv light okay? uv rays so when a body becomes very very extremely hot they produce uv light okay that is one of the electromagnetic waves we know so let me start with the first one that is the radio waves so i am discussing in the decreasing order of their wavelengths electromagnetic spectrum in the decreasing order of their wavelength so in the decreasing order of their wavelength you have got different waves as let me just give you the list of those decreasing order of wavelength that means here we said it will be in terms of frequency it will be increasing order of increasing order of frequency okay if wavelength decreases then frequency increases we know from the relationship of a wave so the sorry here increasing increasing order of wavelength increasing order of wavelength and increasing order of frequency just wait frequency increases this way wavelength increases this way okay so thus they are now uh, inversely proportional so the first wave with maximum wavelength is the radio waves radio waves have got maximum wavelength but least frequency okay very small frequency they have got and the frequency range of the radio waves is frequency range of the radio waves is from 5 into 10 is to 5 hertz to 10 is to 9 hertz 5 into 10 is to 5 hertz to 10 is to 9 hertz this is the frequency range of the radio waves they have got maximum amplitude but the frequency is very small okay and this type of waves can be produced in the electric circuits okay electric circuits that contain an inductor and a capacitor so if i do not do this part from the alternating current chapter let me do it uh, in uh, during some other time this circuit is important i had just skipped that because it's removed from the syllabus okay so in an lc circuit okay oscillations happen if you supply an oscillating voltage or an ac voltage to a circuit that contains inductor and capacitor then around the capacitor there will be oscillations of charges happening okay charges will be oscillating around the capacitor and this oscillations of the charges around the capacitor creates a wave that is called as the 
radio waves. Okay, so basically radio waves are produced in the electrical circuits which contain the inductor and a capacitor. All right. So why this uh, electromagnetic waves, which are the radio waves, are produced in such case is because every time when you see a charge at rest, a charge when it is at rest, it will produce only the electric field. Okay, it is it produces only electric field. If a charge is in motion, but its motion is constant, then it is not going to produce any any other field other apart from electric field. Again, only electric field will be produced by that charge. But if the charge has got some velocity, motion with changing speed, okay, motion with some velocity, then it produces magnetic field. Okay, it produces the charge produces magnetic field. But if a charge is getting accelerated, okay, if a charge is getting accelerated, then it produces electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves. This is the primary method of producing electromagnetic waves. So uh, in, an electromagnetic wave is produced by accelerating charge and the way the charge is getting accelerated can be done in different waves you can accelerate a charge in different waves ways and depending on what way you are using to accelerate the charge you have different types of frequencies and wavelengths and thus different types of electromagnetic waves so here in this case of radio waves the charges are getting accelerated they are oscillating so they are getting accelerated and this happens in an LC circuit, okay? LC circuit supplied with an AC voltage. Thus, this type of waves that are produced in an LC circuit are called as the radio waves, clear? I hope that is clear. So this I had forgotten to mention. It is by accelerating the charge, we can produce electromagnetic waves, clear? So this is the first type of wave. Then you have got your microwaves. After this comes your microwaves. So microwaves, the frequency range is 10 raised to 9 hertz to 10 raised to 9 hertz to 10 raised to 10, 3 into 10 is to 11 hertz. 3 into 10 is to 11 hertz. This frequency ranges you are required to remember okay, from this chapter. It may be asked in, M during, in MCQs. Okay? And what is the method of production of this microwaves? How are these microwaves produced? So the microwaves, they are produced by special vacuum tubes called klystroms. Okay. Thus, microwaves, they are produced by vacuum tubes, in vacuum tubes called as klystrons, K-L-Y-S-T-R-O-N-S, okay. And also, they are produced in microwave ovens. You know this, you must be using this microwave ovens in your kitchen. Okay. And also, uh, this klystrons, also they are called as megatrons, other devices called as megatrons and gun diodes. They are produced using this uh, devices, vacuum tube, klystrons, megatrons and gun diodes. Okay. So these are the microwaves. Then the third one is your infrared waves. Okay. Infrared waves. This infrared waves, you all have 
handle this infrared wave. At least you have come across with this infrared waves. Okay, and also it is one of the most used devices during this COVID time. So your thermometer, thermometer guns that uh, the infrared, the guns that are used to measure the temperatures at different places like banks, airports, stations, okay? They use this infrared waves, okay? They work on the principle of infrared waves. So any hot body, how are these infrared waves produced? Infrared waves, they are produced when a body becomes very hot, okay? When a body becomes hot, it produces infrared waves. And what is the frequency of this infrared waves? It is in the range of 3 into 10 is to 11 hertz to 4 into 10 is to 14 hertz. 3 into 10 is to 11 hertz to 4 into 10 is to 14 hertz. This is the frequency range of the infrared waves. Clear? Not much is to be known about this infrared waves. This is how they are produced. Then comes your, after infrared waves, your visible light. Fourth one. Visible light. So what is the frequency range of this visible light? It is 4 into 10 is to 14 hertz to 8 into 10 is to 14 hertz. 4 into 10 is to 14 hertz to 10 into 10 is to 14 hertz. Sorry, 8 into 10 is to 14 hertz. It's a very narrow band gap that is present in an electromagnetic spectrum. A very small frequency range. 4 into 10 is to 14 hertz to 8 into 10 is to 14 hertz. That is your wave gear. Visible light means your wave gear. Okay, visible light means your wave gear, the rainbow colors. So, at the frequency range for a visible light is very small. It is from 4 into 10 is to 14 hertz to 8 into 10 is to 14 hertz. Okay, no change in the order of magnitude. Very narrow. And how these are produced? How are this produced? This visible light is produced. This visible light is produced by atomic excitations. Okay. What do, you, what do you mean by atomic excitations will be much more clear when I do the chapter on atoms. Okay. Once I do the chapter atoms, you will understand what are called as atomic excitations, visible light. So they are produced by atomic excitations. And what is the meaning of this atomic excitations is that let me just quickly tell you what is the meaning of it. So can you see this part of the board? Yeah. So if you look at a new, look at an atom, atom, for example, hydrogen atom. Okay. It has got a nucleus and one electron rotating around this nucleus in a definite orbit. So when the electron rotates in the orbit, it does not get accelerated and it does not produce any electromagnetic waves. Okay, it does not produce any electromagnetic waves. But when an electron is excited, okay, when an electron, let me take the electron here. Yes. When an electron is excited by supplying some energy to, so that it can move to a higher energy orbit. So this, has, this orbit has got principal quantum number one, principal quantum number two okay so if these are called as energy orbits so if an electron is excited so that it can jump to a higher energy state okay it is not stable in that higher energy state for a long time thus after some time okay in some few nanoseconds or picoseconds it will de-excite and come back to the same energy level. And when it de-excites and comes back to the same energy level, it produces electromagnetic waves.
okay it produces electromagnetic waves that means it has it is getting accelerated in this process also acceleration of the charge produces electromagnetic waves so this is how visible light is produced okay i hope that is clear to everyone then the fifth type of an electromagnetic wave is your uv light ultraviolet rays ultraviolet rays what is the frequency range for ultraviolet rays it is 8 into 10 days to 14 hertz to 5 into 10 days to 16 hertz 8 into 10 days to 14 hertz to 5 into 10 raised to 16 hertz this is the frequency range for the an ultraviolet ray and i have told you already how an ultraviolet ray is produced ultraviolet rays are produced when a body becomes very very hot extremely hot okay it produces ultraviolet rays like for example the fusion reactions that happens on the surface of helium ion fusion fusion reactions that happens on the surface of the sun produces this ultraviolet rays okay extremely hot okay extremely hot bodies will produce ultraviolet rays and also some experiments are already under process for producing an artificial sun okay i think in japan there is some uh, research going on and they are trying to make some artificial sun okay you can just google it and check so these are ultraviolet rays. Then your sixth one. So this is fifth UV rays. Ultraviolet rays. Then sixth one is your X rays. Your X rays. What are these X rays? So again, these X rays will be produced when a charge is accelerated or it is decelerated okay what is the meaning of deceleration deceleration means reduce in acceleration if a charge is moving at a very rapid speed and if it is somehow decelerated that means if it is somehow obstructed so that there is a decrease in its acceleration then in that process you are producing x rays and what are those charges that produces this acceleration sorry what are those charges that, that the deceleration of which produces this x rays they are the electrons so if there are electrons if you direct the electron beam okay at a very very high speed and you obstruct this moving electron this fast moving electrons by using some metal surface of high atomic number metal surface of high atomic number like for example most of the times copper is used okay and the tube in which this process is carried out is called as your coolidge tube okay it is called as coolidge tube uh, named after the scientist so when this high energy electrons are obstructed using some metal surface by providing some stopping potential then in that process there is an x rays that is going to be generated electromagnetic waves called x rays are generated in this process okay so this is how x rays are produced sixth one x rays And what is the frequency range of this X-rays? The frequency range of this X-rays is 10 is to 16 hertz to 3 into 10 is to 10 is to 16 hertz to 3 into 10 is to 21 hertz. 3 into 10 is to 21 hertz. Okay, those are the X-rays. They are produced when high energy electrons are stopped suddenly on a metal of high atomic number. On a metal of high atomic number, for example, your copper. Then the last one, 
the electromagnetic waves which has maximum energy contained by that that is your gamma rays okay this is the symbol gamma a greek letter gamma this is how you write it gamma rays and what is the frequency range of this gamma rays high frequency high energy waves electromagnetic waves 3 into 10 is to 18 hertz to 3 into 10 raised to 18 hertz to 3 into 10 is to 18 hertz to 3 into 10 is to 22 hertz 3 into 10 is to 22 hertz okay yeah, these are your gamma rays so thus we have completed our electromagnetic spectrum and this is what you are required to know but how are this gamma rays produced this gamma rays are produced in an nuclear reaction okay the there are many there are many elements which are not stable okay which are not stable like for example uranium 238 uranium 235 then thorium plutonium okay these are different elements that are not stable and the reason for their instability is the large number of neutrons being present in their nucleus then compared to the protons we shall discuss this in detail greater detail in our nuclei chapter okay so this instability is uh, is due to the uh, number of protons and the number of neutrons okay uh, non symmetry between the number of neutrons and the number of protons due to which these are not stable uh, very very least stable elements and thus due to their instability they radiate they radiate even when kept at room temperature and without any external uh, agent they will be radiating and this radiation produces something called as gamma rays okay they produce gamma rays clear and also in nuclear fusion reactions this type of gamma rays are produced so we have to be a lot of shielding has to be done in a nuclear power plants okay just to block this gamma rays from reaching the normal human life okay because they are very penetrating they can even pen penetrate metal surfaces they are very energetic they can penetrate even the metal surfaces so we are human beings our body is not as firm as the metal surfaces okay so thus they have to be obstructed from being or they have to be obstructed from leaking from the nuclear establishments clear so that is all about your uh, electromagnetic spectrum that i wanted to tell so in the increasing order of frequency increasing order of the wavelength the maximum wavelength electromagnetic wave is your radio waves and least wavelength electromagnetic wave is your gamma rays so this can be used for large distance transmission processes okay in order to uh, large distance communication processes radio waves are used clear so i hope you have understood the things in a brief i have tried to explain the electromagnetic spectrum because it is completely theoretical you have to uh, read that and you have to try to understand so from page number 11 to page number 14 of your sky high tutorials notes you will find the things given point wise and you can just read those things just before your exam okay so that's it for today any questions any queries if you have you can comment now or you can ask me later any questions so thus i complete with this eighth chapter so we are all already done with eight chapters few more chapters are left we shall do them quickly okay and then if at all time remains then we shall be doing revision but i will be conducting the tests that i had all conducted uh, on 6 so similar tests will be conducted every now and then 
so just to make you practice the diff derivations that are there okay and what kind of papers are going to be said by the board and those who are, who did not answer the test so please don't do that from next time okay uh, come here it was just one hour test you could have come and you could have answered the test it would be good for you only you should know you would be knowing where do you stand what how much you have studied and how much you have not okay so i expect all of you all to come and answer the test so that is it for today and if you have any questions you can ask we shall start from the next week the chapter of semiconductors any doubt no doubt so that's it